Welcome back to the uh, hippest show, this side of the projects. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how's everybody doing? Uh, doing great. Hanging good. in there. Yes. Okay. Doing wonderful. Montana, how are you not doing? Look, you know. Oh. You know, oh. I'm doing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Hey, y'all. There's been a recall on Kool-Aid, so uh, <laughs> don't, don't eat red. Don't drink red. There's a recall on red. Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid, yes. <laughs> All right. So, basically, so, you know, I love burgers, right? Okay. And I went to this restaurant, and I told the waiter at this restaurant how I wanted my burger. And I'm a little picky on my burger. And I said, hey, I want the burger sunny side up, egg. Uh, funnel- a burger? Oh. Yeah, with the egg, you know? Okay. All right. Come on. All right. Burger. And, uh, sunny side up. Okay. you know, I like the fair, so I said, can you give me some funnel cake sprinkles? Okay. Peanut butter, dill pickles, sweet relish, capers, anchovies, mayonnaise, and yellow mustard. How far were you away from the restaurant? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Eating like that. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> now, the waiter says that uh, that's impossible. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I said, no, I want real meat. Oh, my God. I don't want the Impossible Burger. Well, I do. <laughs> then the waiter said, no, that's impossible to make. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Anyway, um, <laughs> tune in every Monday for the audio <laughs> version of the <laughs> Dunn <Dunsum> Sun <laughs> Podcast. And every Wednesday for the YouTube version titled the Dunn Sun Podcast. <laughs> All right. So we have a special guest with us called, uh, not called, a special guest called Mariam Abdullah. Right? right. Now, a little bit about her. Now, she is, well, I always say the initials because anytime we bring a therapist on, it says, hey, give us our initials. So she is a LMSW. L is in Larry, M is in Mary, S is in Sam, W is in what? <laughs> therapist. Now, Mariam passions rest in helping, encouraging, and empowering individuals. Her life mantra comes from the words of Oprah Winfrey. When you know better, we do better. Now, as a therapist, her goal is to share the tools and resources needed to change your life for the better. Now, she received her bachelor of science degree in criminal justice and a master of social work from the Tennessee State University. Okay. All right. Now, she has 19 years experience in uh, advocacy and leadership in the field of social work. Now, her core practice includes a focus on individuals, couples and families utilizing dialectical behavior solution focused and trauma informed therapies. Now, also check this out. She is the founder and CEO of I Am Well Consulting LLC, which provides emotional well-being support to professionals. Welcome to the show. Did I miss anything? I think you got everything. Thank you. I'll pay you later. Okay, absolutely. Uh, let me give you my uh, cash app. <laughs> Uh, now she'll be with us throughout the whole show now before we get started it's uh time for andy and gossip in the city gossip in the city is sponsored by powder on those hot and sweaty days use it in the front and back <laughs> nasty asses moss point mississippi good old moss point here we have Jeffrey Reynolds, who's always talking about loose women in his stories that he tells. When he's drinking with the fellas, he's always saying, he did this and he did that with them. It gives a new meaning to 
poking holes in a story. <laughs> Ignorant. <laughs> Portsmouth, Virginia. Kevin Wilson is dating a girl in Portsmouth, but he heard rumors she's what they call street. This Negro called me up one night asking me what that what what does that mean? So I had to look up what they call street, and it reads she who is wholeheartedly part of the street culture, she who is willingly staying on the streets, and it would be difficult to try to change her. I said, look, brother, don't save her. She don't want to be saved. Don't save her. She don't want to be saved. <laughs> Thank you, Project Pat. <laughs> Dayton, Ohio. You and I know that the best TV show to watch in the 90s was Cops. And I got to thinking it really looked like 90% of the episodes were filmed in Dayton. <laughs> Hmm, allegedly, uh, allegedly. <laughs> Thank you, Andy, for um, gossip in the city. All right, so up next is um, Dunce on Trivia. It's the Dunce in Trivial Show. This is how it goes. You're asked four questions. You have to get three out of four right. If not, you're a dumbass. And here's your host. Right. All right, so you know how we virtually pull straws to see who uh, who goes first, and I don't care if you, I don't care if you ain't feeling well or not, you might get picked. All right, I don't care if you're hot, you might get picked. <laughs> now what we do is you got four questions, you got to get three out of right. If not, you're a dumbass. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you have your done son hat off or not, you <laughs> might get picked. <laughs> I don't care if you a guest to the show, you might get picked. <laughs> I don't care if you are the host, you might get picked. <laughs> oh, Person that's up right there is Andy. <laughs> Everybody got a little cooler now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Andy, question number one. And uh, is either A or B in our list. So what is the wettest city in the United States? Is it A, Mobile, Alabama, or B, Seattle, Washington. Seattle, Washington. Oh, my bad. It was Lakeisha from Alabama back in 2014. Oh. What a year. <laughs> oh, sorry, Rod. Oh. I have a thing for mobile home chicks. All they want is bologna sandwiches. So I'll go with uh, Mobile, Wrong. Alabama. Uh, you're right, Andy. <laughs> it is Mobile, Alabama is the wettest city in the United States. You've got to be kidding me. Yeah. All I right. could have sworn it was Seattle. Oh. It rains like crazy in Seattle, Washington. Uh, yeah, but uh, from the stats, it's Mobile, <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> well, I would have got that one wrong, Andy. I guess you're right. All right. All right. Number two. Right. Question number two, Andy. Who invented the word vomit? Was it A, William Shakespeare, or B, Edgar Allan Poe? I did when I went down on Mary Kennedy back in 2008. <laughs> it was rough, child. You know, I have a taste for the arts. Thank you, Dorothy Jean. I'll go with Shakespeare, Rod. All right, Andy. Uh, you're absolutely correct. <laughs> Andy, you smart boy. You smart boy. You smart. All right, number three. Area 51 is located in which state? Is it A, Nevada, or B, New Mexico? Well, both states are giant holes in the wall. <laughs> so, which one would aliens want to visit first? Hmm. Let's go with New Mexico. It has less blacks. <laughs> okay. Uh, Andy, you wrong as hell. <laughs> okay. It's Nevada, A. Eh? All right, number four. What is the common name for dried plums? Is it A, prunes, or B, raisins? Rod, that's a shitty-ass question, <laughs> but I'll give you a shitty-ass answer. Let's go with prunes. Uh, Andy, uh... Uh, that's correct, Andy. <laughs> Good job, Andy. Good job. <laughs> All right. Shanna Montana. Um, Let's... Get it. Angel 
la ciencia. You wrote me? It's just something about this later. Montana is the crazy. Do you want, Do you want my opinion? It's maybe game over for ya. All right, so today's letter is titled My Soul, and it is from Katie from Newport Beach, California, age range 25 to 35. So Katie writes, I can go on and on and tell you I have a fear of being stuck, being stuck in the same socioeconomic class. I can tell you how I don't have the best people around me, but I do have the best people that support me. They don't know how to support me in trying times because nobody around me has been where I am or where I'm trying to go. Everyone around me are workers, not goal achievers. All they can do is encourage me, but it seems like when I try to surround myself around people who have been where I'm trying to go, I have a fear of not being able to come across as being smart. I know how it feels now. I used to try to shame people by using big words in my group, and I knew they didn't know what it meant, but now the same is being done to me. This really makes you think how all of this was cre has created the wealth, the language, the mannerisms, the elegance, the respect. How was this all created? and I'm buying into it. I guess it's called class. Why I'm selling my soul to be a part of something that I thought I was about, but I have no clue about what it really is. I'm writing to let you know. I'm in a place where I can't get my soul back. I've completely sold out to be a part of a class system that nobody accepts me in. I feel like I don't belong, like I didn't earn it, like I didn't go to the schools, like I don't have the high profile jobs. I just know somebody, I just knew somebody and I attached myself to them to get into this circle. But when I go home, I'm miserable. I live a happy, I'm ha I live an unhappy, a wretchedly and uncomfortable life. This is the definition of me. Don San podcast listeners, be careful what you ask for. You can't buy back your soul. We all know the price. All right. Uh, what do mm. you think about this letter? Wow, man. Uh, that, that, that person definitely needs some uh, true help. Um, they seem to be very lost. You know, they, they were saying that the eyes is a window to the soul. Mm -hmm. And she says something very key in that letter that she wrote. She said something about she has positive people in her life, but the people who's really in her circle don't really offer anything. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm saying to myself, if that's the case, you know, <clears throat> One thing I came to find out in life for certain, one thing for sure and two for certain I always say, uh, mm -hmm. if you got negative people in your life, them the ones you got rid yourself of quickly. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to be a reflection of what you surround yourself with, man. Mm -hmm. So if you got all this negativity and you're already recognizing it, that it's, it's there, then she need to eliminate them. Right. She need to eliminate quickly. them quickly. Mm -hmm. And then surround herself with those who she said do care about her but don't know where she's coming from. At least it's a positive right. influence there. You know what I'm saying? Because right now she's surrounded by negative people. And all that's going to do is continue to bring you down, filling, filling in the dumps. You know, you, you can't raise yourself up from that. You know, you, you gotta, if you're going to be positive in life, you got to surround yourself with positive people, man. Mm. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Oliver, um, what do you think about this? Mate, this person needs to take a stick of dynamite and shove it up their ass and have a little person light it because this person is about to be ass out. <laughs> Boom. All right. So to our guest here, um, Mariam, uh, what do you think about this letter? What is your take on it? Um, I would say that um, she has gotten um, caught up in society and social pressures, um, things that will start to um, take your soul um, if you let them, right. um, especially what's going on, you know, in today's society with 
pretty much everybody from children to um, young adults to older people. We get on social media, we start scrolling, we see how people are living, we think they're living the greatest life ever. And then you start to question your own life and what's going on with you. Mm -hmm. And so it's not a good space to be in, but it's not a great space, of course, to take yourself, um, you know, and so there's ways not to go there to mm -hmm. begin with. So, mm. yeah. Good stuff. Andy, what you think about this letter? I believe the initials are KD, right? Meaning can't do it. <laughs> I know the K doesn't match up with the C, but that's what's wrong with you, motherfuckers. <laughs> Always judging. But anyway, the people that write into the show are weird as hell. Only in America, grown folks spending their whole lives doing nothing want to be part of a group that done did the damn thing and they want access. Tell them, Monk, you know my saying, this shit's crazy. <laughs> okay, excellent. All right, so uh, Montana, what you think about this letter? Well, I think KD needs to go to therapy, first of all. <laughs> um, I think that <laughs> KD has a lot of, he's he or she, because I don't think it read whether it's a, a man or a woman, who they are very conflicted in their feelings about wanting, I guess, a better life. But um, it seems like they've gotten a better life, but they still aren't sure that they belong there or that they've accepted the position that they're in. So I just think this is a person that needs to figure out, you know, what really makes you happy, because it seems like they are looking at things and people to make them happy. And we all know that that happiness is temporary. So I think this person needs to figure out, you know, what what kind of peace do they need in their life to have real happiness and then kind of go from there. But in the meantime, yeah. You need to be in therapy probably three times a week. Ooh, wait. <laughs> right. And that's why we have our special guest today is uh, Mariam here. All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to really pick your mind today and see what we come up with and see if we can help all the Dunsonians out there. <laughs> uh, so what I want to do is, is ask you a barrage of questions and see what we come up with. Is that cool? That's cool. All right. So I want to go first. Um, now, I have a I have fear. So today's episode is, of course, about fear. And I have a fear of heights, in case y'all didn't know. And then I have a fear of commitment, just in case y'all ladies want to know. But, I haven't talked to you. <laughs> oh, oh, All right. but uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> but I'll lie to you. I don't have a fear of lying. Oh, God. Oh, I do have God. a fear of commitment. Oh, Lord. I'm lying until we get to the commitment question. You know what? <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking, y'all. <laughs> no, he's not, ladies. He's not joking. I'm just, you know, I, damn, I almost said Pinocchio, but I I'm just joking. I bet. I'm sorry, y'all. When I lie, I get the stuttering up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, this is a question that I have for you. Um Where does fear come from? So, right to get into fear, I feel like we should first get into what that definition of fear is. Mm -hmm. And so where does fear actually come from? The ne definition of fear from the psychology standpoint is a natural, powerful and primitive human emotion. Mm -hmm. It is involved. It involves a universal biochemical response um, as well as a high individual emotional response. So fear alerts us to a presence of danger, which mm -hmm. is good, or the threat of harm, mm -hmm. um, whether that danger is real or not. So physical or psychological. The layman's terms or from the um, Merriam's Webster's definition is it's an unpleasant, often strong emotion um, caused by anticipation or awareness of danger. Um, so from these definitions, we can see that fear is an emotion. So emotions are a state of mind based on a circumstance, mood, or relationship. Therefore, fear is the emotion that attempts to warn us, protect us, and ultimately keep us safe if we're, if we're listening. Mm -hmm. So for the most part, our emotions, including fear, come from and are shaped by our experiences. These experiences come from both childhood and adulthood, which um, has been instilled from many of us from generations before. And so our foundations are based on things that have happened in the past. And then we carry that basis and assign it 
to other situations every time something similar to that happens. Mm-hmm. And some of our fears are helpful and some hinder of us, hinder us, hence limiting beliefs or negative self-talk. And so education also can play a part of um, shaping our emotions. Um, we may not always experience something or have the opportunity to experience something, but we can learn about it, read about it, or we're taught about it. Um, and so this can be good or bad, just depends on what you were taught or what you learned. Mm-hmm. For instance, if you were taught as a young child, which many of us were, that the boogeyman was real, mm-hmm. then it was a good thing. It which kept I still us, believe it is. <laughs> <laughs> look, it kept us safe. We didn't look under the bed and we did not open the closet. Right. Yeah. Um, but as an adult, like Rod, if you haven't learned that the <laughs> if you haven't learned that the boogeyman is not real, mm-hmm. then you're walking around life never seeking the truth never looking both literally and figuratively <laughs> so you're scared you're still scared of the boogeyman yeah. mm-hmm. this world and so lastly fear comes from society and so society plays a huge part as we kind of talked about with the um caller earlier uh-huh. um in our emotions and how we respond and so no one wants to be judged or criticized so we take the more common more comfortable option so if everyone else is scared of something then I'm going to be scared of it too. Ooh, okay. um, same thing if there's a crowd of people and several people start running, or it could just take one person to start running. Mm-hmm. We all start running, and we don't even know what we're running from or what yeah. we're afraid of. Mm-hmm. So fear comes from many different places. Um, basically, it's emotional response that comes from and is influenced by our experiences, our life, and society. Mm. Good stuff. All right. That's something. Yeah. I once uh, heard that uh, I forgot what I read that at, but they said do what you fear to overcome your fear mm-hmm. and I always try to carry myself in that way but I got a question though uh, so how does the imagination affect your fear mm-hmm. so imagination is a pretty cool thing um, I would say imagination affects our fears in different ways so it could be both positive or negative Um, It kind of depends on the foundation, the beliefs that I just talked about, what your experiences were. So if all your experiences are negative, then your imagination tends to focus on negativity. If you've had some positive experiences in your past, then your imagination may tend to be more positive. So our imaginations, um, again, are a pretty powerful tool. Um, They're ever present in our lives because they sit in our subconscious. And so they show up um, when our subconscious gives them a lift, gives them a boost to um, show up. Mm -hmm. And we need to make space for our imaginations to be able to show up in a more positive light. And so that's why it's important to make sure that we are addressing our past trauma, hurt, pain, and unresolved issues so that we allow room to make space for the more positive light Hence, helping you have a more positive imagination and subconscious. And so it's kind of like, have you ever talked yourself out of something right. because you were afraid of it? I mm. definitely have. Right. Um, and sounds like the caller that um, we yeah. just talked about. I have. Did. I talked myself out of marriage, but yeah. That's why you, you have a problem what? with or fear of commitment. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Montana, why are you looking at me like that for? I'm on behalf of all the women listening. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody got to be here for us. I'm sorry, Mike. Look, this is for you. So we <laughs> we um we uh, continuously get in our own way by focusing on things that limit us by saying that we have a fear of commitment, and so it holds us back in all areas of our lives. Um, mm-hmm. And so the goal should be: I do not have a fear of commitment. Uh, the goal should be imagining something that is more positive versus something that is negative. So um, instead of saying, um, no one in my family has ever done this, try, I'll be the first to make my ancestors proud. Mm -hmm. Um, Instead of saying, what if I fail? Try, when I succeed, I will pat myself on the back and do a happy dance. Okay. And then instead of saying, people will think that I'm better than them, 
try saying I'll be a role model and inspire others. Mm. And so that those are ways to um, make your imagination more positive, more strength based um, so you can overcome fear. OK, mm-hmm. I, I, I got a, I got another question. Let me ask you this. And this coming from a personal perspective of my own. Mm-hmm. Uh, can one person, can a person be so afraid of fear that they refuse to let fear dominate them so they always charge them forward? Can that be a good thing or a bad thing? Um, it seems like it may be contradictory. Yeah. I mean, if you're afraid of you, being you afraid. Fear. Right, 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 right. <laughs> If you're afraid of being afraid, um, no, I don't. I don't know that it would push you forward. It seemed like you would just get in a cycle in your brain, in your subconscious, of just going around and around and never leaving that space. So you end up, you know, just battling, afraid of being afraid. Oh, get ready to do it. Oh no, I'm not going to do it because I'm afraid. Oh, well, I need to do it because I need to be ahead. Mm. Sounds like again the caller that we talked about right. trying to be in one space. Um, and holding and trap, two different, kind yeah. of trapped in another. Yeah, and so you end up going kind of like a hamster in the wheel, going around and around, around, and around. battling mm-hmm. the fear of being fearful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Do you mm-hmm. see? Um, do you ever see when clients come to you? Do you ever see uh, clients using fear as a weapon to manipulate people or control or pit one against another or, or like family? I got family members that do that. Hey, forgive me, y'all, but. Uh, <laughs> I ain't going to call out no names. You see that people use fear as a weapon when they really don't really have fear. Uh, they just like to talk about that. How do you, how do you, uh, you know? Yeah. Um, I would say kind of from um, my favorite quote, the quick answer is um, when we know better, we do better. Right. Mm-hmm. So unfortunately, a lot of us don't know any better. Fear is normally um, accompanied by panic which causes our brains to freeze, making it easier for us to be manipulated. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we, um, this is seen commonly in a lot of people you've heard of, you either fight, flight, or freeze. Mm -hmm. So when you're you're panicking, you got to make a decision. And so society overall has definitely been known to use fear to manipulate and control different groups of people and situations. And so history has shown us that many groups of people were manipulated by those in power to include most of our BIPOC communities. So Mm -hmm. our black, brown, indigenous, people of color communities. But whether you're the manipulator or someone being manipulated, it again goes back to your past experiences. What did you grow up? What are your beliefs? What lies, you know, dormant in you? And so the trauma of our past it may have happened indirectly or directly to us. Um, it carries over in how we're, um, you know, how we experience it, function and um, display emotions. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so a great example is, of course, during slavery, our masters instilled fear in the slaves yeah. as a form of control. Now, I love my master. I'm sorry. Did I have an outburst? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had a <laughs> Yes, the r- wrong master. Right. Okay. <laughs> Um, and so they would also pit um, the slaves against each other by, um, you know, you have a house inside and outside slave. So you have someone who's dark pitted against the light um, slave. And so we also see that tend to play out with our um, generation. So our grandparents, mm. our parents' choices and discipline. They, I love, they, um, our parents love to put, what, fear in us so that we don't do something and a, or a way to control us as well as sometimes and it, it's not um, purposeful but they can pit siblings against each other when you have a favorite child you know or a sibling that's called quote the good sibling or mm-hmm. the bad sibling this is a way of doing it again these things have been instilled in us um, in our subconscious and so we don't even realize that we have now become the manipulator mm-hmm. Um, It's also big in religion. And so in most black um, communities, we are taught to fear God. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same thing. Mm-hmm. You we're taught to fear God, and so then it's a way to manipulate or control our behavior and how you want us to act. Um, you know, in society, and so yes, um, people use fear to control, and some people are, you know, controlled by fear. Unfortunately, not realizing it. So what would you say in that situation, what would be the benefit of like addressing your fear in therapy? So addressing your fear in therapy comes with um, many benefits. Um, The first thing would be um, to help you change your mindset. And so um, therapy is a process and it creates a safe space for us as therapists to be able to help you share, open up, confide And then understand and work through your emotions, work through your past traumas, work through your um, past beliefs. So why do you feel this way? Why are you having these thoughts? Um, And why, again, are you the manipulator or are you being manipulated by fear? And so therapy has highs and lows. It doesn't happen overnight. And so that's the other thing. It's a true process and it takes work. It takes commitment um, to the process. But over time, it helps you change your narrative, shift to um, something that's more positive by overcoming, again, your fear. And so just as I was talking about with the black and brown communities, they put a lot of um, weight on religion and God. And so most of the time we'll say, just pray it away. Mm -hmm. Uh So just pray about it. Yeah. Right. And so therapy in itself is a spiritual power that has healing, too. So you can pray about it as well as you can seek out mental health professional um, to assist you in doing some of that work that, yes, you can pray about, but you don't want to try to do it all alone. Okay. Would you say, um, were you about to say something, Ryan? Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, what would you say is like the number one way if you had to choose one to like overcome fear? Because, I mean, based on what you're saying, therapy sounds like the most logical option. But what would you say is like the top choice that people should look at if they're really wanting to overcome fear? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say um, if you're wanting to overcome fear, one thing that you can start with at home, you know, with yourself and it's very practical is just um, working on overcoming fear yourself. So, um That emotion, again, as I said earlier, is very natural. We all feel it Mm -hmm. and it all comes up. But if it's excessive and overwhelming, then we need to do something about it. So some practical ways are to first ask yourself, what's the worst case scenario around this issue, Mm -hmm. whatever you're having an issue with around fear? And then really think about it. So write that um, issue down on a piece of paper, um, save it on your computer, And then make a list of all the things that are positive around that situation. So if I go forward, if I do this, what will be positive in this aspect? Write that down the same way. Write it on a piece of paper, journal it, text it, voice to text in your phone, any of that. And really think about the emotions around um, that positivity, that success, what that actually looks like. Um, Again, we're trying to shift our um, imagination to something positive and away from the negative. Mm -hmm. And then set a date, set a date that you will absolutely stop thinking about and talking about and believing your fear. Mm -hmm. So say on this coming Friday, I will get it all out. I will write about it. I will talk to my friends about it. I will, you know, whatever, and get it out, dance it out, laugh it out, talk it out, whatever it needs to happen. Then talk to an accountability partner. So that is important. And if you're wanting to change your mindset and um, live differently, the best way to start is to get an accountability partner. Somebody that will help you, like Rod, somebody that mm-hmm. will hold you I to. You. <laughs> I hold all y'all. All y'all peasants. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had a king moment. Mm, yes. Yeah, so we're, we're not going to be the master that uh, instills fear. <laughs> But we're going to hold accountable. So we're going to say, hey, this Friday, you said you weren't going to talk about this issue anymore. It's negative. It's bringing you down. It's holding you back. We're not we're going to we're not talking about it. And then on that date, release it. Is it okay to say to a friend or family member, hey, man, we ain't doing this today. Is that healthy? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. You if it's something, especially if it has to do with you, if it's someone that has come to you and needs to talk, then if it's not a good time, you might want to say, 
right now is not a great time, but when is, um, you know, when can we get together? Because I do want to sit and talk with you. Mm -hmm. I do want to hear it out. If it's you going to them with something um, or you just don't want to talk about, then, of course, yeah, you don't have to talk about anything in the moment if you're not feeling it. But always make space for people who you feel like may need help um, or may need to talk. So it is it is important to make space for your friends and family regardless. It is important for that. It is important, yes, but it should not overwhelm you. So don't don't let it overwhelm whatever you have going on in the moment. Okay. All right. Let me ask you something. Uh, a person who feel a certain sense of professionist, perf- being a professionist, do they have an issue with fear? Yeah. Um, so perfectionist, kind of like you were talking about um, earlier, um, of course, perfectionist, they're called perfectionists for a reason. And so they want everything to be 100 percent. Hence why they're called perfectionists. Um, so as a therapist, if you have extreme perfectionism, you're normally diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder. And so having a person, a perfectionist personality can be good. It can be healthy at some point, but then it can also become unhealthy if it's excessive and taken to the extreme. So just to um, clarify, some characteristics of a healthy um, perfectionism are that you're goal directed, you have good organizational skills, and you have high standards for yourself or others. And so unhealthy perfectionism, though, on the other hand, looks like a fear of making mistakes. So you never even try worrying about the past mistakes so you stay focused on the past and can't get to the future and then a fear of letting others down and so you're all you're constantly living for others instead of for yourself Mm -hmm. and so those type of fears become excessive and hence again they are unhealthy um so again you have the healthy and the unhealthy um there are a lot of fear related limiting beliefs and so um and negative self-talk And so you hear about a fear of success, a fear of failure, a fear of not being good enough, a fear of not being loved, and a fear of rejection. So how many people have had any of these show up in their life? Yes, I would say. Oh, Tana, how come your hand didn't go up? It did. A little bit. (laughs) Yes, we have we have all touched on these yeah. um, these areas, if if not all of them, at some point in our life, and it's okay because again, fear is a human um, emotion. But what we want to start doing is when that fear comes in, um, as a perfectionist, just start telling yourself. If you um, are constantly telling yourself, um, "I don't deserve a promotion." And therefore, you never expect anything. You never seek out opportunities. You need to start telling yourself and and believing that you are more than qualified. You've been loyal to the company and you deserve a raise, a promotion or a new position. You hear that? Well, that's right. always been my thought. <laughs> <laughs> I because I worked my butt off, you know right. what I'm saying? And so right. um. so <laughs> with that being said, um. So fear can be used as a motivating factor to do better, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, so do you talk to people who have fear relationships, such as myself? <laughs> no, I think you're the only one. <laughs> <laughs> the only one. I knew I was a unicorn, y'all. <laughs> Ladies. Yeah, if one of a kind. Ladies, if you want a unicorn, <laughs> come see your boy Rod. <laughs> If you want your time, AKA. Waste, if you want your time wasted, go. No commitments, AKA no commitments. Right. <laughs> I won't tell if you won't. <laughs> you already uh, told. <laughs> hey, by the time you see this podcast, it'd be too late. <laughs> <laughs> but they're gonna be in love by the time this one air. Yeah, by the time this air, I'll be like, hey, things are not working right. <laughs> Terrible. I told you I was gonna pay for the next dinner, but I, I don't. <laughs> I lied. Oh boy. That's why I tune in every Wednesday to the Dunn's Up podcast. All right, does anybody have any more questions uh about fear? I mean 
Wow. Hey, is there? Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say, when can we get you signed up for therapy? <laughs> uh, well, to deal with your commitment. I mean, issues. I only get paid twice a year. So. Okay, well. <laughs> I mean, you take. Tell uh, him don't come see you if he only get paid twice a year. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you take jacks. No, I no. do not. Okay, well, uh, not, hey. not for you. <laughs> That's my thing when I go to restaurants or whatever. Like, you'll take jacks, baby. Looks like you got to pay this time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, they bounce too much. Yeah, right, um, Mariam. Um, that uh, your information will be on the podcast in the show notes. So they will be able to contact you and then book a session with you and ask you all types of questions about fear. Uh, if anybody doesn't have any other questions, uh, let's see here. Well, uh, I mean, I don't have any more questions. Anybody have any more questions? You already asked us that. Okay. <laughs> well, um, thank you for tuning in to the Dunsum Podcast. Peace out. Bye. Bye. Bye.